Hi, Jim here. Today we're going to review five different hitch pins that are used to hold your trailer hitch into the hitch receiver. So that's my review of the five different hitch pins from the super simple to the stainless steel simple, galvanized steel uh, locking, all made in the USA, made in China, uh, locking with a cylindrical key, and then the made in USA stainless steel with the blade key and the safety catch pin. Pricing from about $2 to $5 all the way up to $50 as you go across the board. These are the five pins we're going to look at in order of increasing price. The super simple and cheap non-locking pin anywhere from two to ten bucks. The better stainless steel non-locking pin, uh, five to twelve bucks for that one. This was my first ever uh, locking hitch pin. Uh, it's made in the USA. About uh, six, uh, I think it was twenty bucks when I bought it. They're now available for about thirty-six. Uh, this is a made in China locking hitch pin. I had to replace this one when I went from a two inch uh, receiver to a two and a half inch receiver. Um, and then the top of the line made in the USA locking hitch pin with the safety clip. All of these pins are 5 8 inch diameter steel rated for class three and four hitches. Two of them are for two inch receivers, this one and this one and the other three will work in the two and a half inch receivers. Except for pin number three, the two inch locking pin, all pins were stored in my garage when not in use. Pin three was always stored outdoors on my truck with the hitch in place. The first pin is a super simple pin. It's got a bend that keeps it from going all the way through and then the pin keeps it from coming through the other way. I got this with my first uh, shank. This is a draw tight. Came with that, and I used it to tow my boat. And uh, I used it for a lot of years. It's it's fine, uh, strong, durable, cheap. Um, the pros are it's cheap, and it works. And uh, as you can see, maybe this end is flat, which means you have to have the receiver exactly lined up with your hole so you can push that pin in. So if I was going to use one of these today, I would want to get a little tapered in. So if I'm not exactly aligned, I can still push that pin through and it'll self-align. It doesn't lock, so I didn't have the security that I wanted. Okay, this is another uh, straight pin. It came with my Gen Y hitch. It has a unique style of a locking pin, if you can see the shape of that. It's easy to put in. And and it twists over and then you can't accidentally pull it out. The pros for this pen, again, is it's simple, it's durable. It costs anywhere from uh, $8 to $11 if you wanted to buy one online. It is, uh, it's a good pen, uh, stainless steel, so it's not going to corrode, but it doesn't have the security that you're going to get from a locking pen. Otherwise, I'd say this is a, is a pretty good uh, pen for anybody who just needs a straight pen. Now this was the first locking pin that I ever bought. It's um, a key lock, and once you lock it, you can pull it. You can see the key there. Goes in pretty easily, and then it unscrews out of the pin part, the locking head, and then you can pull it out. I like that unscrewing feature. Uh, I also like that you have to do you have to twist it in so you know that you're secure. When you pull that lock out, you know that's not going anywhere. It's not going to unscrew itself. The problem with this lock, I don't know if you can see with my ruler here, it's only about two and a half inches on the span there. And two and a half inches was too short for my two and a half inch receiver. You need at least uh, three plus inches of span if you're going to get this lock in. But the good thing about this lock uh, here is it is just a galvanized steel. 
it's got the knurling on there so you can twist it around to line up with your key. I don't know if you can see the end of this, but uh, the end has a little weather sealing door there. And like I said, I have this lock on my truck all year round uh, for many years. It, it didn't rust, uh, the key didn't jam, it still works fine. This is probably my favorite lock ever, I just wish it had been longer. Uh, a very good, you can buy these now for about $36 from C.T. Johnson. Next locking pin I want to show you is this one. This is a MetaWare lock. It has a uh, rubber uh, dust and moisture cover. It comes with a round cylindrical key that goes in here and unlocks and it's a, it's a snap-in kind of arrangement. So all you got to do is, is push it in and now it's locked. You do need to check to make sure it's locked after you've got it locked. I have heard of some of these falling out. The other thing that you need to be aware of is it's because of the, the way this is designed, this locking end will twist around on the shaft. And so when you go to put your key in, I, Frequently, I'm twisting that key a lot to get it lined up. So finally, I made a little mark right here where the alignment is, and the key has a ridge on it. I don't know if you can you can see the the ridge there, but uh, that ridge needs to align with the hole uh, in the lock. So there's there's a slot in the lock that ridge has to line up with. When you get that in, then you can lock it. It'll go on without the key. The other thing is, this key is pretty small in your hands. If you have it on a keychain, you're going to be fumbling with it. So I didn't like. I don't like these cylindrical locks. I have them on a couple of my locks. Very hard to get a line. Hard, harder than the blade type key. So not my favorite thing. This is made in China. And that was another thing I was concerned about. It has uh, it comes with these O-rings, and that takes up the slack. If you could use this in a three-inch receiver, if you needed to, a two-inch or a two and a half inch, and we'll get try to get a close-up up of this later. But it has an O-ring here on this end. Of course, a weather sealing cap. So uh, people have complained that dirt and moisture gets into the uh, the key, a hole there, and then the lock freezes up. Uh, I haven't had that problem. I've only used this lock for maybe, uh, let's say, 10,000 miles of, of pulling in, in various kinds of weather, mostly either sunny or rainy. Uh, I haven't had any problem with the lock freezing up or falling off. But I was, when I read reviews of people saying the lock had fallen off, I became concerned. And so I went to the internet and found this bulletproof lock. It's made in the USA, stainless steel. It's good for uh, two or two and a half or three inch receivers. It has a straight key like this. The straight key is pretty easy to align. It has the same type of locking mechanism and you can snap it in place with the key out. It has weather sealing both on the key side and then inside here there's an o-ring. The ring goes up in and now we're sealed and I put the top on and I'm completely weather sealed. It also comes with a locking pin and a locking pin has two holes it can go in so when it's in, you're double secure. If your lock does fall off, you still have the locking pin here to keep the pin from uh, coming out. It's not that clever kind of locking pin the other one had, but I feel like it just adds an extra measure of security. These are available for about $50 from a bulletproof company. Made in the USA, stainless steel, so I think that's gives me a better feeling of security. The main con for, for 
the bulletproof lock is, it is expensive. It was $50 online. But when you think about what I'm protecting, maybe $100,000 worth of trailer and contents there, uh, that is pretty cheap insurance, 50 bucks, to uh, make sure that your hitch doesn't come out of the receiver. So that's my review of the five different hitch pins from the Super Simple to the Stainless Steel Simple, galvanized steel uh, locking, all made in the USA, made in China, uh, locking with a cylindrical key, and then the made in the USA stainless steel with the blade key and the safety catch pin. Okay, that's my review of your five different uh, hitch pins. I hope you enjoyed it and it's useful to you. If you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, make any comments down below. I'd like to hear what you think about this and which one are you using. That's all for now. Till next time, I'm Jim.